Hey, thanks for, thanks for coming out. It means the world to see so many friends and so many people that I've known in the past and how my agency life kind of overlaps with my new life at Visit Fort Worth. Um, I'll just kind of go through this real quick. It is the world's largest title, and, uh, and I also joke that everyone at Visit Fort Worth has two jobs. So my job is the Associate Vice President of Creative and Brand and also the Director of the Fort Worth Music Office. So Visit Fort Worth has a family of brands that's underneath it. And so Visit Fort Worth is the parent company. We also own the Twice Daily Cattle Drive in the Fort Worth Stockyards. That's ours. So a lot of people don't know that. It's the number one tourist attraction in Fort Worth. We have the Sports Commission. That's responsible for bringing sporting events, things like table tennis, but also NCAA gymnastics. Things like that are big sporting events that bring room nights and attribute to what we can do to help put heads in beds. And that's how we're funded through the hotel tax. We also have Visita, which is our Spanish language version of Visit Fort Worth. And then we have the Film Commission, which has done a lot of stuff you've seen with 1883, all the Taylor Sheridan events, our uh, productions coming to Fort Worth, and a lot of TV shows. But we also have Here Fort Worth, and that's the music office. And so every city has an attraction. And so this, like I said, is our number one tourist attraction. We all have a convention center or something like that that brings people here. We all have great hotels, every city has them, like the Hotel Drover, and we have great places and restaurants like Joe T. Garcia's. But what makes a city different can be things like what's made here. And so when I got to visit Fort Worth, what we tried to do was bring people to Fort Worth to stay at our hotels, to bring people to, to visit our attractions, but also we also wanted to get people to buy local. And that's a big thing that we did. And so, you know, you see all the, the original raw bottles, you know, Justin Boots, Best Made Pickles, Mrs. Renfro's, Joe T's, and Dickies. And so these are things that people are really cool and it's really hot and people love it. But one of the things that a lot of people don't know about Fort Worth is we're larger than all these other cities, but we're also compared to being a small city or we're the big, small city. And so we're bigger than Nashville, bigger than DC, bigger than Denver, bigger than Las Vegas, San Francisco, Portland, and Seattle, but we're also perceived as a very small city. So one of the things we've done at Visit Fort Worth is try to treat our destination like an entertainment brand. And that's been really easy to do because with all the film production coming here, all the things happening in sports, we can kind of sell it like this because anything is entertainment just like anything is creative. When you go on vacation, that's entertainment. When you go to a meeting, a conference, if you do something that evening, it's entertainment. And so we have film, convention, sports, and music. So we tried to treat this like an entertainment brand. And so how does that fit into local music? And so that's what we wanted to do was put a spotlight on what Fort Worth music is. Because when I say, where is Elvis from? Everyone knows Memphis. And when I say, where's Pearl Jam from? Most people know Seattle. And when I say, where's Notorious B.I.G. from? Most people know Brooklyn, Bed-Stuy. But then it was like, how do we make people associate Fort Worth with Leon Bridges? And so how, a lot of people say, well, how did this start? And so we were just like, well, it started with, ironically, this guy. And for those of you who know, this is Kevin Aldridge. And so we had an event many, many years ago. I started at Visit Fort Worth 13 years ago. Um, I came on as a freelancer um, because of the Super Bowl. Their graphic designer had left and they needed some help. And I was like, I had Sunday at Square as a client and I had Visit Fort Worth. And I was like, I hope we get a Super Bowl every year. I got no sleep, I was just up, but it was just, it was the greatest time in the world. And so um, I came on and we would do events and we'd host customers uh, and bring FAMs, which are familiarization tours that we'd bring people in to see the destination that wanna bring a meeting. And so it was one of those things where I was like, we would hire bands and they were just random, like from a talent agency. And I was like, there's so many local music here that's great. Why aren't we featuring anyone? And they're like, well, how do we get in touch with them? And I was like, well, let me call Kevin Aldridge. And so I called Kevin Aldridge. I said, hey, you're going to play this event for us. And he's like, what is it? Is it a private event? And I was like, no, it's going to be really cool. And it pays real, pretty well. And so uh, <laughs> he, <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, so he actually, was the person that really kicked off us working with local musicians. A lot of people think it's Leon Bridges, but he's also part of our story, and that's why I have him in here again. So in 2016, 
after the height of Leon Bridges was blown up, we just had Luke Wade on The Voice. There was a lot of things happening in Fort Worth music. And so Brooks Kendall, who owns The Post, uh, we got a group of people together and said, how can we support local music? And there's been organizations just like anything else that have tried to do this. But we were just like, how do we get people together and connect and do something around local music? So that year, South by Southwest, South by Southwest reached out to us in Austin and said, hey, Leon Bridges just had his amazing year last year. Is there any more talent in Fort Worth that we should know about? And I was like, ironically, yes. So we put together a group of people, and it was Brooks Kendall, um, uh, Amy Powell, a few other people, Luke Wade, and we did a, our first South by Southwest event. And when we did this event, um, it was pretty amazing because um, the poster is actually on that wall up there, and it's signed by all the artists, which is pretty amazing. It's the red one with the silver Sharpie. But also, uh, Maren Morris broke at, that year, and her record was going to come out. And she did all her press from our, our event. And so it was really neat to have all these media coming to our event. Um, it was crazy because it was on St. Patrick's Day on 6th Street, so just it was nuts. Um, <laughs> But it was really neat to have so many, so many people focus on Fort Worth. And so that got us to what I'm going to show. The next one is a video. It's about three minutes, so I'll just kind of step out of the way. But we partnered with Grady Spencer on the work. And he has a song called Things to Do. And the chorus is Bless My Soul and Take Me Back to Fort Worth. And we always wanted to figure out a way to use this song in some kind of marketing. So this was in 2017. We went to Nile City Sound, which is the studio in the near south side, where Leon Bridges uh, recorded his first album and some other material since. But we went there and we were like, hey, we want to recreate the song a little faster so it'd be better in a video production. So I'm going to step out of the way. And uh, we showed this at our annual meeting, which is we, it's our 11th annual meeting will be February 15th this year, 2024. And this is where we bring everyone together and talk about what tourism does for Fort Worth. So we de debuted this video then. I'll step out of the way and let you watch it. You'll see a lot of familiar faces. This is the original one, so I wanted to really show the first version. Some of the people may not be in favor anymore, if you know what I mean. But um, at the same time, it's really cool to see what we did and how we brought locals together to support tourism, but also local music. Say the road is gonna call you out, boy So raise your hand when you hear your name But I don't think that I dream the same Cause when my truck is poking at the clouds And the storm is trying to get away But I don't wanna sing about the rain Bless my soul and take me back to Fort Worth Pack my things, I've got my lady too Here I stay until the Lord is gonna call me So I guess I get up, I guess I got again boy but the work is gonna make you old I think I'd rather be poor than cold you say be careful what you've gone and wished for see the money make a man grow mean but I don't care if it's gold or green so bless my soul and Take me back to Fort Worth Pack my things, I've got my lady too Here I'll stay until the Lord is gonna call me So I guess I'll get up, I guess I got things
it's pretty, it's pretty emotional watching that video and just seeing like all the people that are in this room that are actually in this video. Uh, Matt Shelton here, and then also Sonia Cisneros rode the bike in front of the uh, Eamon Carter. And if you watch the video, there's somebody coming out and telling us to leave. And that's when actually we shot that. So. So it's kind of funny. So, so that was just one of the things is incorporating local music into videos, promotion, things like that. Um, we also have currently on our website, we have 13 neighborhood videos that showcase the different neighborhoods around Fort Worth from the east side to downtown to River East, Ray Street over here. And each one of them is soundtracked by a local musician. And we also pay all those musicians. We don't ever ask for anything for free as you wouldn't ask for a designer to give you any work for free or a, or a painter to give you anything for free. We pay all our artists and when we refer them, we also make sure that they get compensated as well. So another thing that was really prideful of us is we're the first music friendly city in the state of Texas. A lot of people thought it would be Austin, um, but because of the things we were doing in Fort Worth, people said, or the music office said, y'all should be the first ones to do this. And I was like, well, how do we be the first music friendly city when that's, everyone's gonna think Austin is. So we actually got our paperwork in first. So we were the first music friendly city. And that goes back to 2017, which is pretty amazing to think about how long that's been. But since then, now there's over 40 cities that are music friendly. And this just means that you support the creative community, much like you know, Creative Mornings does, but also just we make sure that people are paid. We try to do things to get promotion. And we try to support the music, but also make sure we support venues like The Post or Cicada in the near south side or you know, like even places like Billy Bob's. And it's just kind of getting all those places you know, that are on the same page. Um, and then also what we do at Here Fort Worth is try to about building community. One of the things we saw was the big disconnect is how do artists get and interact together? Um, we saw big, there was a lot of thoughts that it was clicky or you only knew your own group and things like that. So we started doing, um, first off we started with a town hall and we asked the creative community and musicians like what they wanted. And so even though it's here Fort Worth, everyone's welcome at every event. So when we do a mixer or we do a downtown hall, everyone's welcome to come to these and participate. And so we did this, this was our first town hall. It was at Wild Acre Brewing. Um, you can see Pat Green is there, the Clyburn. Uh, that's Brendan Anthony, who's the director of the, for, uh, the Texas Music Office, and then our boss, Mitch Whitten. But you see, this was the first group of people. But what's really interesting is if I had a pointer, there's a person in the back with a red shirt and a black ball cap, and that's Lou Charles. And Lou Charles, when we were doing this, he raised his hand, he goes, this is cool, but what are you guys doing for hip hop? And we were just like, we don't know what we're doing for hip hop, we just started this, but it all can't just be white guys with guitars. You know, we had to really, you know, diversify this and figure out what we were gonna do. So starting that, we start doing mixers. And so every, the first Tuesday of every month, we do a mixer and it's open to everyone. And so we do it at music friendly businesses. So you can see here's just a selection of them. We've done it at printed, um, printed threads, uh, AOE recording studio, Martin House, uh, hotels that feature live music. And so the first Tuesday of every month, we do one of these at a, at a music friendly, vid it could be a record store, it could be a music venue. We just try to get people to go to new places, much like today, a lot of you hadn't been to the post. How do we get people in these doors and support these businesses? And then every quarter, we do an education mixer and we partnered with printed threads and we do these uh, education mixers where we focus on topics that musicians could find beneficial. We've worked with a woman that only does taxes for musicians and creatives. We've worked, we had uh, Scott Booker, the manager of the Flaming Lips. He came and talked about when you're ready for a manager. Um, we just did one with UNTL Science Center. They're one of two schools in the United States that has a performing arts medicine program. So it's like the repetition motion of playing drums, uh, vocals for you know opera singers. And it's one of two and it's funded purely by grants, but it's free. And so like they talk about the repetitive motion of like that people go through and they compared um, like drummers to like football players and like the repetitive motion. But like when a football player gets off the field, they ice them down, they you know, have a, a protein you know, rich meal that they're gonna have. But when a drummer gets off stage, usually they have a couple beers, stay up all night, and then, you know, <laughs> but it's like, you know, and so it's the, it's the things that how something's treated one way and how something else is treated another way. And so uh, printed threads, we host these at printed threads, which I don't know if you've ever been to, but it's off 35 uh, and basically Vickery. And, uh, and so they, have, they help support us. And then also Avalon does the sound. And so it's really a nice community thing that comes together. And then Martin House Brewery, every month, they give us beer for the event. And then uh, we usually we have a sponsor that takes care of the food. And that's Brett Bowden's really thing. If you're gonna do this at my place, everyone's gotta eat. And that's really a good way to feed the creative community. And so, 
by that, we also, besides supporting things through mixers, we also do a music economic impact study. We did one of these pre-COVID. It came out in February of 21, but we were digesting all the uh, information on that. And this is, we were really real lucky. That's the only word I can say is we, we had a baseline before COVID to see what our music community was doing. And that's venues, that's performers, that's record stores, that's um, everything, you know, recording studios, and, the, and the, what that industry provided to Fort Worth. And it was actually higher than a lot of the cities you think are, you know, real music cities. So in, in, uh, earlier this year, um, Sydney, who's on our team in the back, we went around and hung posters up in all these different venues with a QR code to take a survey. Because what we need to know is how this has been affected post-COVID. And, you know, is the rebound, because everybody thought, you know, after COVID, everybody was going to come back and go to music venues and do the stuff. And you're, you saw a huge spike in it. And then you're also starting to see it go down. Also, people don't buy tickets as, as fast as they used to. People used to buy tickets when they went on sale. Now people wait until the day of. And so that affects guarantees and how that works. So we try to do this um, every couple of years to see where we are and why we waited so long. And I say so long, it's really not that long to do our latest one is we now have venues like Dickies, which we didn't have before. And we also have Tana Hills and the Stockyards, which are big venues and are changing the game plan for how people see Fort Worth. As Fort Worthians, whenever we went to Dallas to see a show, we drive back at two in the morning, be tired, have to go to work the next day. That was kind of our standard thing. But because now we have so many venues, it's great for us. But now we're seeing Dallasites come over here, but they stay the night, which is really interesting. They're not conditioned to drive back like we were for so long. So, <laughs> so it's funny because that helps us because then that becomes more heads and beds and feeds our hotel tax, which funds Visit Fort Worth. But we also do oh, another friendly face in the audience. Um, and so there's Ann Zeta. But, um, and so in 2020, right before the pandemic, we host our annual meeting, which I said is our kind of celebration of tourism for Fort Worth. And we wanted to honor one of our, our own. So uh, St. Louis Avenue, which is where Record Town is, and Tulips, that small street right there, we actually ceremoniously named it T-Bone Burnett Boulevard. And so if you go down there, there's street toppers that have T-Bone Burnett Boulevard. But he's from Fort Worth. And that street is actually called St. Louis. And he's from, he was was born in St. Louis, so, but it was really just a neat nod to this, but we were able to honor him and give him that. So we want to celebrate our past, not just, you know, look at what we're doing moving forward. And then another thing we did was during COVID, we worked with the United Way of Tarrant County and uh, started a creative industry relief fund. And Taryn Fleenor, who's in the back, used to be at Billy Bob's. She now works at Visit Fort Worth. Um, we partnered with uh, Billy Bob's on their 39th birthday, which was closed because of COVID. We got a, local a lot of local musicians to record a program. So we did like a home broadcast. And we did, uh, we sold the Bless My Soul t-shirts that Print Threads helped us with for $25 and all that money went to this creative industry relief fund. So if you were uh, in film or music or any kind of creative arts, um, you could get a one-time $300 grant, which wasn't a million bucks, but we were able to help a lot of people. And we wound up raising over $35,000 to support our creative community here. And so uh, we worked with the United Way of Tarrant County. They actually were able to issue those funds to the people directly. So there was no, it wasn't picking favorites or anything. It was just truly helping. This was really instrumental. A lot of other cities um, called us and said, how did you do this? And we couldn't have done this without Rachel Golay, which I want to give her a shout out. She started a fund and did this on her own because she was on vacation when the pandemic broke. And so she started this and she goes, I can't manage this. So we contacted her and said, hey, how can we take this over? Because we saw it such a good thing and money was still coming in. She just wasn't able to get it out. So we worked with her to make this happen. And if it wasn't for her, I don't know how soon we would have started or how advanced we would have been by the time it came out. And uh, so it was just a really neat thing to actually get to do and, and give back to our creative community. And then that's just a close up of the shirt. And these are actually still available. If anyone would want one, they're on fortworth.com slash shirts, I think. Um, but also during COVID, which was pretty interesting, is we played a, a major part in the uh, Save Our Stages Act, which was a nonpartisan bill uh, with uh, Amy Klobuchar and uh, Senator Cornyn. And so we actually had to speak on the press conference during COVID about why they needed to give grants to music venues to stay open. And this was a big thing that we were able to because of our connections and how Fort Worth is so just, you know, wants to help and it's kind of that, that's our superpower is collaboration. Um, and so we were able to get all these people together and do it at Billy Bob's and get in front of this and do the press conference there and tell the importance of that. And so we did one to announce that they were gonna start this program and then one when it got passed. So it was a pretty impactful thing. 
Um, and then this is just kind of fun. Something that we do is this is a local artist, uh, Lorena Lee. And so, um, so during Christmas, we work with Cook Children's at other times throughout the year. And so we just did these fun little, um, where they shouted out. So we did these things where they did for the children that were in the rooms and couldn't get out. So we did these little welcome messages and they did little concerts for them. And so it's just a fun thing to kind of keep our creative community active while they were still, you know, unable to go out and perform. Um, so another thing we do is a big part of here Fort Worth is exporting local music. And so by doing that, we want musicians to get out of Fort Worth, but still call Fort Worth home. We've had so many local musicians that were super talented that were baristas, and there's nothing wrong with that, or bartenders or you know, whatever, but they were just afraid to make that first step. So we wanted to uh, export local music and get them on the road. One of the things we did was um, we did these Texas music takeovers in London. And uh, pre-pandemic, London was one of our top international markets for Fort Worth. And so you can't see anything, can you? I'm just standing right in the way. Um, so uh, we did these, uh, these little uh, showcases throughout London and did busking in the tubes. And this, the, the Texas shape is so iconic. We did, a, we did these floor graphics out in front of the tube stations. And people just come out, what is, what is, what's Texas doing here? And you know, a lot of expats. <laughs> And so it was a lot of fun. And so we did some really cool ones to, you know, I mean, it's hard to see, but we had Pat Green, K uh, Casey Donahue. We did uh, Vaden Todd Lewis from the Toadies, Co Wetzel, Luke Wade, Grady Spencer. And so it's been a lot of fun to take these people on there. But also to, when we do these events and like people would take the train in from like, you know, all over Europe and say, I follow you on Spotify. I never thought you'd come to, you know, and you're just like, wow, you don't realize what international reach your artists have and they don't think they're going to get, you know, to see, or our fans aren't going to get to see them perform. And so it was really, really special to get to do that. We did that for three years. And then also, like I said, we've done South by Southwest. And so there's the first poster and you can see how we've progressed. And then uh, 2022 was our last uh, year that we did it. And uh, not saying we will never go back, but that was, um, it's just a lot to undertake to, to do, and, but it becomes a billboard for the city. And you know, Austin during South by Southwest isn't just about Austinites. I mean, so many international and national people attend that festival. It's a great way to get in front of these people. Um, another thing we do here at Fort Worth is offer, tra offer travel grants. So uh, musicians can get up to $500 to do three consecutive dates outside of the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And so this is instrumental to getting exporting local music. And one of the ways this actually came up from a local artist, Vincent Neil Emerson, he came to our office one day and he says, I got an idea. And you know, anyone that says that it's a bad idea. <laughs> and he came to us and he says, I got an idea. Y'all should buy a van and a trailer. <laughs> and I go, okay. And he goes, and then musicians can check it out like a library card. And I go, this is a horrible idea. <laughs> And I was like, what are, what are you going to do with that? And he's like, well, you know, we can use it to go on tour and then bring it back. And I was like, what about insurance, maintenance? You know, what, what, you know, I was like, there's so many things wrong with this. I go, what do you really need? He goes, we really just need like $500 to get on the road. And I was like, well, why didn't you ask for $500? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, do you have a question? I was on that tour. Oh, were you? The money you gave us made that tour open for Cultural Mall happen. Awesome. Awesome. Very cool. Well, that's, that's, that's pretty special. So, um, but we were able to do this, and it was really cool because it was, it, it was our way to start doing this. And we've helped classical pianists. We've helped Vincent L. Emerson. We've done a lot of different things with, you know, Lou Charles. And it's just not just one style of music. It's open to anyone, three consecutive dates. It just has to be on the website. We still have some funds left for this year, so please spread the word. It's on our website. You just apply for it. And it's, it's, it's not as hard as you think it is. Um, and what's really neat is we used to do gift cards for it, but that was hard to pay for hotel rooms and things. Um, so we started off for offering now checks. So we actually do give them a hard check to get um, to do that. Um, but it's pretty special to, to be able to get musicians on the road and do this. Um, and then uh, we also do things like South by Southwest and Americana and Folk Alliance uh, uh, application reimbursement. So sometimes people won't apply for these festivals just because that $35 or $50 is a barrier. And it may not seem like a lot, but it can be a lot to some people. And so we'll do, we'll do like 25 spots where we'll pay for that just to get people to apply for these things. Because a lot of people say, oh, I'm just throwing my money away. Well, throw our money away. But I want you to try to do this to, to be able to apply for these festivals. And then another thing we do is... Um, we partnered with the Fort Worth Public Library to start Amplify 817. Uh, Amplify 817 is basically a Spotify for local music. Um, it's free. You can stream it. Anyone can stream it without a library card. If you want to download it, you have to have a library card. 
but um, they feature all local music, and it's a great way when someone says, hey, what are some artists from Fort Worth I don't know about? Send them there. Or if they say, hey, I need a musician for my birthday party or whatever, I say, go to this, check this out. These are all musicians. But the really cool thing with this is a few music-friendly cities have this Amplify. When, well, it's not called Amplify. It's called it's got a horrible name. It's called Music Cat is the program platform. But um, so they have this program, and they all name it after something in their city. So we helped them with the naming of this. And then uh, Connor Dardis from Thirst Creative actually did all the creative for it. And then um, when we did this, is they told us what they paid because they pay the artists up front, not by streaming. So they get a check up front to have their music for three years. And uh, they told us how much it was, and I was like. That's good, but couldn't you do a little more? So we actually helped them raise it. So our Amplify 817 pays more than any other music cap program. And that was just by saying like, that's great to pay them this much, but could you do a little more just to support them? And then um, this is just kind of where we are now, things we've done recently. And uh, so I said like last year in 2022, we went to South by Southwest. We were at the Container Bar, um, at, which is no longer there. It's gonna be condos now, which ironic. And. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, so we did, uh, we were a Fort Worth house at South by Southwest. So I have a cool recap video and this is kind of showing why we do things like this. While we want to support the music, it also gets a lot of different eyeballs on Fort Worth. So I've got a quick recap video that shows the attendees and everything and I'll let you see this real quick. I'm too big for this. I get it off the strand. Hold it the way to the world. Never seen nothing like this. I had to do it for me. But it bad, now everyone eat. Too busy plotting my move. They care what they say about me. So turn the Fort Worth event is like a living advertisement. We've got food, we've got TX Whiskey, the Hotel Drover. Fort Worth is full of South By fans, and we are glad to be here. What they say about me. So turn me up. Don't turn me down. Turn me up. Don't turn me down. Do it for the city. South by Southwest has been amazing. Three days of incredible performances. What's next? Who knows? I think we're gonna only make it bigger and make it better and make people wanna come here. They wanna blow out my can They wanna pay me a The best work for South by Southwest is inspiring. You can go in rejuvenated and back to the hard work that we're doing in Fort Worth and know that we're absolutely on the right track. I'm not into parties, you know that. Why you so mad that I wouldn't go? and the love that the town shows, especially in the film and, and TV world, has been out of this world. I want to see more and more film and TV happening in Fort Worth. For them to have a presence here to shine light on our industry and, and the arts is crucial. So let's keep it going. Oh my gosh, it's all about what's next it's in Fort Worth right next, now, so okay? Stay tuned. Yeah, you got to stay tuned and you definitely got to listen to On The Same Page Podcast if you really want to find out to see what's going on in Fort Worth. I think the future of Fort Worth, I mean, it is completely unmatched. There is so much growth in every single area and aspect. Just coming to South by Southwest and seeing everyone here experience it, new faces coming to Fort Worth, and it's just all up from here. The future is so bright for our city. We've got a lot of growth that's coming our way, and showcasing all that there is is the first step in really making sure that we grow the way that we want to grow. And then one of the other cool things in the last year that happened is we partnered with the Clyburn and it seems like an unlikely pairing, but for, it's one of the legacy music organizations in Fort Worth. And so they came to us and wanted to appeal to a younger audience. And so what we did was we partnered with Lou Charles, Avery Burke, and Daniel Sue, who was one of the finalists in the last competition. And they actually wrote a song together and, and it's on Spotify and it's called Free. And it's really neat to see a classical pianist, a hip hop artist, and an emo rock girl put this thing out together and they actually wrote it together. We put them in the studio and they actually performed it. And we performed it at South by Southwest and they performed at our annual meeting and uh, it's just pretty neat to see how things like this come together but it's also getting people in the same room that you know allows these things to happen and um, quickly go through these we've also gone to Americana Fest in the last three years that's a festival uh, in Nashville that's like a, basically a smaller uh, music festival 
um, but it's like South by was probably 25 years ago. It's really industry oriented, but it's really neat to see all the, the attention that it puts on our artists and record labels come and different things. And it's neat to see how these different you know, artists, Grady Spencer, Vincent Neil Emerson, Summer Dean, but then also going from the first year and then Summer Dean had our la headlined our last year, but also neat to see like just the amount of sponsors that now wanna participate, the local brands, you know, Printed Threads, Smith Music, which is a record distrib or music distributor in the stockyards. Every year they pay for the back line so the artists don't have to bring all their own gear. But Justin Boots gave away boots at our event and outfitted a lot of the musicians. And then Avalon Productions, which books and is the parent company of The Post, actually handed the meals for the artists. So all the, all the artists got fed at the event. Um, but it's also, we also do Focal Ants. We'll be going back there. This is a, a festival in Kansas City, but it's also a neat market for us to get into. And uh, you'll see some familiar names on there. Some of the people are here. But uh, we'll be doing this again in 2024. And then one of the things that I think is really neat is, uh, so we'll be uh, the official tourism sponsor at the Luck Reunion this year. And it's neat just to see Visit Fort Worth aligned with brands like Jack Daniels, um, Tito's, Southwest Airlines. So we're trying to put our, our money into things that reach the right people. We're trying to elevate the brand of Fort Worth. And also because of this, we're able to get musicians on the lineup at that. And we're also able to do that with, a, we do another one in Chicago. Chicago's our number one market right now outside of Texas. We don't know why, but people will come here from Chicago, they stay longer and they spend more money than anyone else. So we do that festival in Chicago as well. Last year, uh, we, get, we submitted a list of artists and they select Grady Spencer. This year, we're probably gonna get, uh, fingers crossed, Abraham Alexander and Summer Dean on that festival as well, as well as another musician we weren't familiar with. And that's what I love. If there's somebody I don't know, please let me know because everybody says, you must know everything and I don't. So, you know, I don't know what I don't know. So please let us know. But there's a musician out of TCU that applied for it. And so he's actually gonna, they're gonna have a second stage and put him on there. Um, and then I'll be the first to let you guys know our next Here Fort Worth Mixer will be Tuesday, uh, December 5th. It'll be at Martin House. We do all our, um, all our uh, Christmas mixers, our holiday mixers at the Martin House. They are so generous to give us all the beer for our, our mixers at the at Printed Threads, so we like to give back to them. Uh, we've done this, this will be our second open mic we've done, and so this is really interesting because this is one of the opportunities where more people come out, uh, they, they wanna participate, it's also their kind of gateway into trying something. We did our last one uh, at Tana Hills and Tim Love actually said, hey, I'll provide all the production, just do this, do it here. And so we had the big LED screen behind them. And so I was frantically like typing the person's name so they could have their name behind them and they'd be you know, doing, the, doing their social posts. So it was, a, you know, it was a big, it was a neat way to, you know, participate that way, but also it brought out people and it was so inspiring as there was a girl and she brought her sister and, and her whole family. And she goes, I just wanna do one song. And I was like, no, you can get to do two. And she goes, no, I really, I've only written one song. <laughs> and I finished it last night so I could do it for this thing. And I was like, that was so cool to see someone actually, you know, want to do that. And so we're going to do this again. So we'll do the mixer at uh, Martin House. And again, everyone's welcome, all genres, you know, just show up, even if you just want to support music or discover something free. It's a neat way to do it. So with that, thank you. And remember, it's people like Leon Bridges that put Fort Worth on their stage backdrop that make this all worthwhile. And here's my contact information if you need to get a hold of me. Thank you so much. It was really inspiring to get to do this today.